Good evening. My name is Jose Soled, and I am the co-chair of the new. I'm a co-chair of the New Bedford Coalition to Save Our Schools, and I've also been an educator for many, many years, from Puerto Rico to the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth at the Labor Education Center, and I wholeheartedly agree with all the previous speakers and what they've said I needed to be done. I want to let you know that the New Bedford Coalition to Save Our Schools has been a part of this attempt and this struggle to get more money for these schools. We were part of MAJOR, the Massachusetts Education Justice Alliance, who fought for this along with unions, community activists, students, parents, and all kinds of different organizations to get more money to make our public schools better, more efficient, and to serve the main thing that they have to serve is the communities. And I'm here to reemphasize that, that we do not want this money spent on anything but with, with stuff that will serve our schools and will make our students even more better and feel more welcome in the schools. Already has been mentioned, the ethnic studies is a good example. Uh, we need, but, I also do work with the immigrant community. And I work with the community that's trying to get licenses for, for, for undocumented workers. And I have the opportunity when I meet with them to talk about what they face in the schools. And it's disheartening to hear that because there's not enough people in these schools that speak their languages. Many of these, these in, undocumented immigrants need that kind of help. They have no no clue of what their rights are in these schools. One of the women that I was dealing with last week with told me about an 18 year old son who was told in his school because he didn't speak the language that he was 18 and he had to leave because he wasn't gonna pass anyway. This is not the way that we should be dealing with these, these people. She didn't know that she had the right not to oppose that because he could go back to school till he got, you know, till the age limit that they have by law, right? Others had a daughter that was sent here, that started school here, no investigation of what level she had done in her home country, which was Guatemala, and she was automatically, because of her age, nothing else, put into the second grade, where she cannot deal because she did not have first grade in the first place. She went to like a pre-kinder kind of stuff in Guatemala, but nobody tried to understand what the different systems were. This has to stop. We have to have people in the schools that can deal with these folks, whether they're from Latin America, Cape Bird, Portugal, or whatever. They have to be able to deal with these folks. The money has to go to provide these kind of services and the services that our colleagues and co-members of the coalition have said are needed. We will fight till the last minute to make sure that that money is spent on that and not spent on more administrators and not spent on anything else but the students. And the other thing that I want to emphasize before I stop is that I want you to understand, you saw this young lady, students have to be treated like human beings and understood that they have rights and that they can speak up and they know what's going on. You have to give them a voice, just like you have to give the community a voice, and you have to make sure that the New Bedford Coalition for, to Save Our Schools is part of this whole process. And we're here fighting for one thing, to make our schools better for everyone. Thank you very much.